Hello, everyone, and good morning. Welcome to our live feed update, a very special one for, uh, I mean, this is, uh, this is May 3rd, not that that particularly matters. Uh, I am your host, of course, Taryn Armstrong, and I am here today to talk to you guys about another person's game across the season of Big Brother Canada 9. This time, we'll be talking about Terra. Terra. Uh, Tara is the second person in our final three here, uh, guaranteed to be at least. Um, she has won the final four veto and is going to be making the decision to, uh, cut one of the, uh, the two players, either Kiefer or Brayden, to bring down to the final three, uh, with her. So, um... Here we are. We're going to talk about uh, Tara, potentially the winner of Big Brother Canada 9. Um, who, who would have guessed? Who would have guessed across the season that this would be a potential outcome? Um, so, uh, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about Tara's game. It has been an interesting one. Um, not quite as unique as Ty's game. Uh, it's, it's actually... Tara's game is, is actually... Um, kind of a common common thread we we see this a lot it's it's the person who didn't have a lot of agency didn't have a lot of um social capital in the game and then kind of makes an end game comp run to uh uh to make themselves a contender um so uh so let's talk about Terra's game see what we think here um back in week 1 we're rewinding time First week of the game, Terra enters the game. Again, don't know a whole lot about week one. Unfortunately, the feeds were not on. Uh, but there's still some stuff to talk about here. Um, the house is split into teams. And uh, Terra is going to be safe in the first week. She is also, like Ty, a member of Team Destiny. Um, so she is immune for that first week. Um, and uh, and that is going to be uh, great for her because she was uh, she was a target in that first week uh, and in the second week she was somebody that uh, was an easy first boot an easy second boot um, and uh, the the fact that she was immune was definitely beneficial to her here um, as she manages to avoid being a, a, a somebody that was put on the block at, either as a pawn or a target. Um, and that, uh, that definitely helps her in the game. Um, now in the first week, the Sunsetters form, they have a side alliance with Austin, Kyle, and Ro. Um, uh, or sorry, they have a side alliance with Austin. Kyle and Ro become, uh, their own thing. And Tara, in the, in this first week, she makes a close bond with Tina, um, and she makes a close bond with Toya. And the three of them together are kind of a thing, but not an official thing. Little does she know, of course, that, uh... Tina and, and Toya are both in the Sunsetters. They have their own thing going on. Uh, and so, unfortunately uh, for Tara, she is she is the side alliance. She is, uh, but not even an official one. She is just kind of a, a loose parachute at this time. Um, now, in this first week, Josh is going to become a social pariah when he claims that the, the boys are forming a Pretty Boys 2.0. And he becomes the house consensus target until... Toya flips the vote at the last minute against Julie, and Julie is evicted 11 to 2. Uh, obviously, Tara not having a whole lot to do with that, at least from what we can tell. Um, so we head into week week two. Um, Tara, again, Tara enters the game. She kind of struggles socially. Um, again, she she gets in with uh she gets in with 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 Toya and with Tina, but apart from those two people, she doesn't really make any bonds um she's not in with the guys she's not in with brayden and austin um she doesn't really have uh she she kind of has maybe a loose relationship with Kiefer, um but not not a solid one at all um she doesn't really uh talk to beth um she just doesn't she doesn't have a ton here uh in the game um and so uh, she is. She is kind of trying. I mean, she, she is the player. And again, it happens every season. You put in 
you know, 14 people into a house and some of them are just not going to fit in quite as much. And that was Tara. Uh, she just doesn't fit in. She's kind of, uh, you know, she's she's a little bit older. She's a mom. Um, and that's an experience that a lot of the other players do not have. Um, so uh, so she struggles in that regard uh, to to just kind of fit in with with the crowd. Um, so when Austin wins the HOH uh, in week two, Toya is going to help guide her nominations towards Kiefer and Josh. She's not able to prevent Austin from nominating Kiefer because of what Kiefer did. Um, and uh, the plan is to evict Josh uh, and uh, Tara. Tara is kind of involved in these in these conversations. Um, she's she's talking with Toya about it. Toya is including her. Um, the Sunsetters in general include her in a lot of conversations this week. Again, as kind of a parachute, uh, she's loosely attached via Toya and Tina. Um, and so she feels like she's a part of it, but again, doesn't quite realize that they are all part of a, an alliance, an official alliance that she is not part of. But she does feel like something's off. I mean, she can obviously tell that she's not uh you know she's not fitting in um she talks she talks to toya about how she feels left out um and that and that she doesn't and that she's not fitting in um she says uh that she really expected to get along well with brayden um she saw brayden she saw his personality she was like this is my kind of guy uh i'm gonna get along well with him and she hasn't uh in fact She's caught Brayden making fun of her behind her back a few times, uh, and uh, that is true. He was doing that. He didn't like her. Many people didn't like her. Vic didn't like her. A lot of uh, Tyne and Jed didn't like. A lot of people talked about not liking Tara again. She is just she's uh, you know Josh was the social pariah in the house, uh, but Tara um, was was definitely somebody that was not liked either. Um, and uh and she could sense it and she's always she's again always been that person in the house that is kind of just like i know you guys don't like me w whatever you know uh it sucks um so uh kyle and roe are going to become concerned that ty jed austin Braden, and beth are working together so they approach tina Kiefer, toya and tara uh, about forming a resistance um, and Tara is the only person uh, of those people that were approached uh, that is super on board with this idea she uh, Kyle and Roe approaching her they need to form a resistance she's like yes I would love to be a part of something um, Tina is also willing to play ball because she wants to play both sides if possible and uh, this is her first big opportunity to uh, to actually be again be a part of something wield a little bit of power in the game uh unfortunately for her Kiefer and Toya uh are not down for this and they are going to be ratting this out to the sunsetters um so uh still kind of lost in this game um Tara is going to attempt to get Jed on the block both as a, an initial nominee and, and as a replacement um and you know she thinks, why not? Do you know? Uh, Austin is HOH. Let me talk to Austin about putting up Jed. Jed is obviously a big target. Um, you know, why wouldn't you put up Jed? Uh, she then lets Jed know, yeah, I, of course I suggested you as a person to put up. Uh, I think because she feels like, well, it's obvious. Why wouldn't I do that? And and the thing is that nobody else is doing that because Jed is in a killer position at this time in the game. Um, so uh, this this is a great example of of Terra in the game, right? Um, she is kind of operating in a different universe than the one that the other players are operating in for most of the game, um, and it's not. A terrible universe. She's operating in a universe where the HOH puts up a big target who should be put up that week because he wasn't really working with Austin and he is somebody that she maybe should have targeted that week. Um, but, uh, but instead of sort of like trying to operate within the bounds of the game she's playing, she's not really, really included in those bounds. She goes for 
a big shot. And uh, she, she solo just tries it. Uh, she goes to Austin. She says, let's put up Jed. Nobody else is willing to do that. Everybody else plays a little more scared and a little smarter. Um, and, uh, and she's not shy about the fact that she's trying to play the game as well. Uh, so she tries this, of course it fails, and she's so not respected in the game that Jed barely even cares. Uh, he's like, oh, you tried to get me up on the block? That's cute. All right. Leave me alone now. I've got actual work to do. Um, so, uh, the Sunsetters end up trying to flip this vote multiple times because Kiefer and Toya rat out the fact that uh, Ro and um, uh, and Kyle are trying to uh, form a resistance against them, right? So Austin ends up putting, again, Kiefer and Josh, but then Kiefer wins the veto, takes himself down. Ro ends up going on the block as a replacement, again, uh, uh, due to Toya, for the most part. Um, and, uh, and the Sunsetters then decide they may want to flip this vote because Ro is trying to form a resistance against them, ratted out by... Uh, uh, Toya and Kiefer. Now Tara is part of this resistance, um, but uh, but luckily, um, when you know, it is not super caught uh, in 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 trying to resist. Um, but uh, they are thinking about going against Ro. Uh, now Tara is on board for the flip, uh, as because in Tara's mind, she's being included. Uh, again, she's being included in many of these conversations about the flip, and so when they're talking about making the flip. She's willing to do it because it it feels like she's going to be included in this other thing. So maybe she won't work with Kyle and Roe in the resistance, but maybe she'll be able to work with this other group who is making a flip happen. Um, uh, but as it goes back and forth and they continue to be indecisive, um, she starts to not be as on board. Um, and then the, the big thing that happens is that Kyle and Roe eventually figure out because it's going back and forth so often, uh, that uh, that something is happening. Something shady is going on. And uh, they ask Ty and Jed about it. Ty and Jed try to blame Tara for it all because she's an easy scapegoat, but it does not work. Kyle and Roe approach Tara and they tell her, Jed and Ty are trying to blame you for this flip. And she is incensed because they are the ones that have been going back and forth for days and she has been nothing but just waiting for their decision. Uh, and they have the gall to blame her for starting all of this and being the cause of all of this. She is pissed. She's pissed. And another thing about Tara is that she has a temper. Um, and she does, she does not take these things lightly. Uh, so Tara is not going to be a uh, fan of Jed and Ty. From this point forward, not that she was a huge fan of them prior. Again, she did try to get Jed nominated, but uh, this is really the final straw for her in terms of uh, her relationship with them, uh, strategically at least. So uh, Kyle and Roe, having finally opened their eyes to the real uh, nature of the house, are finally going to start working more with Austin and Brayden, and uh, they move in that direction along with Tina and Tara. And uh, the the sort of seeds of the oddballs are here in this week as Josh is evicted unanimously. What a mistake by the Sunsetters. Um, so we head into week three. Week three. Uh, Victoria is going to win this HOH. And this is a great result for, uh, for, for, for Tara because Victoria was also, uh, like Kiefer tried to blame Victoria for the flip as well. Victoria is also pissed about this flip situation. Victoria is also somebody that didn't want that to happen. Victoria is also somebody that has a good relationship with Austin and Brayden and Roe and Kyle. And, uh, you know, not the best relationship with, uh, with Tara and Tina, but uh, she has no reason to go after them. And with Victoria as the HOH, she should be taking a shot at the Sunsetters. Now, ideally for Tara, Victoria takes a shot at, at Jed and Ty or Beth or Basically anybody but uh, Toya, Tina, or Kiefer, because those are the people that she could work with within uh, that other side. Um, however, unfortunately for her, Victoria is going to want Toya out. 
And with Victoria wanting Toya out, uh, Tara is kind of in a lose-lose situation. And she, uh, she doesn't really have the ability to, uh, to convince Victoria to go elsewhere. And to be fair, nobody seems to. She is set on whatever she wants. Um, but this is also going to be a running theme in Tara's game. Again, very little social capital, even with her allies. Uh, when her allies win the HOH, they often take somebody out of the game that benefits her. She, her allies win the game, win the HOH, and she's safe, but she loses the week because she's always, always on the losing end of the target. Um, so, uh, Tara is is obviously uh, not pleased with Toya, even though she does not want Toya to go. She's not pleased with Toya and how she handled all the flip flopping. Um, and, uh, and Toya seems to be on the side of Jed and Ty who were blaming her for the flip. So, uh, sh she would, again, she would like, she would prefer to keep Toya around, but if Toya is up against Kiefer, which she becomes up against Kiefer, uh, then, uh, then she's gonna, she's gonna let Toya go. So Victoria puts Toya and Kiefer on the block. Kiefer is the pawn, but she's pretending that he's the target to the Sunsetters. Tara knows that Toya is the real target, and she's okay with that. She would prefer to keep Kiefer around because, uh, again, Jed and Ty want Toya to stay. Toya seems to be on the side of Jed and Ty. She understands that uh, Jed and Ty clearly do not care about her in the game. They tried to pin this flip on her. Um, and if Toya is working with them and Kiefer is not, and they're, they're going to vote out Kiefer and they want to protect Toya, then that means that she's going to choose Kiefer to, uh, to stick with here. Um, so uh so that's where that's where Tara stands this week. Um again, ideally, uh she doesn't have to lose either of them, but when she makes the choice, she does she does choose Kiefer here. Um it's here in week two as well that the oddballs are going to solidify uh against the sunsetters. They come together. Everyone that was either not involved in the flip or didn't agree with the flip. Um so it's Victoria, uh Kyle. Roe, Tina, Tara, Austin, and Brayden. A seven-person alliance in a game of 12 people. It's seven versus five, and one of those five is about to go home. It's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Uh, and Tara is, is, is extremely excited to finally be a part of something here. Um, that, uh, that this is real, she actually has allies, and she's in the game. And again, Tara is somebody who is trying to play the game, she's just not able to. They don't, they don't give her a seat at the table, and so she finally has that seat at the, ta at the table, and she is ready to go. Unfortunately, in this alliance, she still had no say, and again, couldn't convince Victoria to actually target somebody that would have been beneficial to her, and instead, she loses an ally, a potential ally on the other side. Um, so this excitement that she has, this newfound sort of confidence that she has, is going to be tempered a bit when she overhears Jed say that she looks like a 13-year-old boy uh, from behind. She is not pleased about that comment either. It's really going to get in, uh, in her head in terms of uh, how she feels about Jed. Um, if she was not already pissed at Jed and Ty, she is now extremely pissed at Jed in particular. She is going to vent about it to Ty, um, and, um, and, and, and just really just like, I do not like this man. Um, but she does eventually talk to, to Jed and they kind of clear the air. And this is going to be sort of indicative of their relationship throughout the season that uh, Ty and Jed, but par primarily Jed, will do something, um, you know, wrong to Tara, and then she will respond uh, and be, uh, you know, do like do wrong things to them. Um, and uh, it's 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 a whole it's a whole cycle here. Um, but uh, but I you know it definitely is a contentious relationship throughout. But she does always manage to have conversations, particularly with Jed, um, to where she is able to clear the air. 
um and uh and and by the end they they do have a a kind of relationship uh that uh is definitely interesting i mean if i told you right now in week three that when jed gets evicted he would say that he can't decide between ty or tara who he would want to vote for in the final two um <clears throat> you'd probably tell me that i've lost my mind so uh let's let's go ahead and uh and move forward here uh tina and tara are going to decide here in week three they are included in the oddballs but the sunsetters are still kind of like desperate for numbers and um and she and they uh they are they're actually talking about trying to reel uh tara in um that they they need to officially approach tara and make her an, an official sunsetter because they need numbers. Uh, they're about to lose Kiefer, they think, and they need to replace Kiefer with essentially Terra. Now, they never end up doing it because they're sunsetters and they don't do actual plans. They just talk about them. What are you talking about? Um, but, uh, but because Tina and Terra are both in this position, and for a lot of this recap, I'm going to say Tina and Tara, and even when I say just Tara, it's often Tara and Tina. Um, but uh, they, they they work very very closely with each other throughout most of this game. Um, Tina often being the one to come up with the plans, Tara often being the one to uh, attempt to execute those plans. Um, so they decide we're going to play both sides. Um, both sides seem to be preoccupied with going after each other, so. Let's let's just ride the middle. Um, we'll keep pretending on this side that we're over here, and then we'll also be with the oddballs. In reality, we are with the oddballs. We are against Ty and Jed. They would be our targets. Um, Ty, in particular, at this point in the game. Uh, however, um, you know, if the Sunsetters win, and they don't know, or Tara, Tara doesn't know, they're called the Sunsetters at this point. But if that if that side wins, then hey, uh, we're over here uh sorry oddballs um so that is uh that is the plan and uh and that is a great place for them to be um they actually approach Kiefer about joining them because they again plan on keeping Kiefer this week unbeknownst to the sunsetters uh thing and uh they end up uh getting into an alliance with Kiefer Kiefer calls it the pre-90s um so uh Jed ends up winning the veto. He doesn't use it because Vic threatens to put Ty on the block. Uh, this is not the result that Tara wanted. Again, um, she is unable to get a good result here. This should have been a great result. Um, Jed wins the veto. He was planning on using it on Toya. And if he had, then Beth likely would have gone up on the block. Do you want me to put Beth up? Uh, that was kind of the plan. And, uh, and Beth would have gone home if that had happened. And that would have been fantastic for Tara's game. Uh, all she needed to do was prevent Victoria from threatening to put Ty on the block, but uh, she she didn't. She, again, not active enough and not enough influence in the game to make this work. This was a situation that was like best case scenario in terms of comp outcomes, or at least close to it. And she's still not able to get what she wants. Um, so uh, Jed ends up not using the veto and that means that she is going to have to lose Toya. Um, and, uh, and that is not great for her here. Uh, so trying to play the middle, trying to, you know, seeing that the two sides are preoccupied with each other. Um, it's great sounding. The problem is Jed and Ty dislike Tara and Tina and Brayden and, and, and all of the other quote-unquote floaters so much uh, and they're so frustrated with, uh, and Beth, Beth is here as well um, with, with the idea that like, hey, we're going, so Jed and Ty they see, they see it, Ty in particular Ty, he sees he sees the writing on the wall it's us versus them and there are, there are these Braydens and Terras and Tinas are just sitting in the middle and they're going to ride to the end with a free pass. And that's super annoying. Super annoying. Uh, so what they wanted to do was make a truce with Kyle and Roe so that they would have the freedom 
to target T Tina, Terra, and Brayden, and 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 whoever else. Terra in particular. Terra was the one they would want to, to target the most uh, if they could. Um, and uh, the the problem is that they co they couldn't. Um, and this is a huge strength of Terra's in this game. Now she does actively play this middle, but it's not a middle that she actively like played herself into. She kind of found herself in a spot where she was safe and decided to actively work that spot. Um, and Jed, Jed and Ty and Beth, they recognized that she found herself in that position and they saw that she was in a great spot and they were frustrated with it. And that's why they call her a floater, right? Um, because Tara is a floater. Definitely. Uh, she is in the middle. Uh, she is going to float back and forth to the power. And in a season of sides, in a season of alliances, the floaters are looked down upon because they get free rides. Because the people in the alliances find themselves locked into a position where they can't target the floaters or they lose. And so they get frustrated at the fact that these other people have found themselves in better spots because they were worse players. Um, now, that is not true of all of the people who found themselves in the middle, but it is true of Terra who, again, did not actively put herself there. She just wasn't included in any alliances prior. Um, so she and didn't have any strong relationships, so wasn't tied to any side. Um, so uh, so that's that's the thing. Again, like her positioning here is great, but uh, <laughs> but uh, her social game is still so bad that she still is almost targeted here. And if there's a different result, she may have been targeted here in the following HOH. But Terra is going to uh, vote out Toya here in week three with a blind side of six to three. Um, and we're going to head into week four. So um, we head into week four. Uh, again, if Ty or Jed or even Beth, uh, win this HOH, we are likely looking at a situation... Now, Terra would not have been the primary target for sure. Um, however, she very well could have been a pawn again uh, if, uh, if, if circumstances played out in a certain way. Uh, Austin and, um, and Victoria are uh, going to be the two primary targets for Ty, Jed, and Beth, but uh, you could definitely see Terra going up as a pawn if uh, if one of them won, and then y you guys know how that works. If Terra is on the block, then the back and forth, the back and forth, what a nightmare that would have been for her. Um, but uh, luckily for her, it's not going to be uh, one of them that wins. It's going to be Kiefer, and that is kind of lucky because Kiefer is in one of her alliances, but it's not great in the sense that Kiefer, again, is not going to do what she wants to do. Um, so he wants Kyle out. That is not what Tara wants. Um, now she's, again, willing to go along with it because she's playing the middle and Kiefer is an ally and uh, so on and so forth. But she's been bonding with Kyle, similar to Toya. It's, he's not her closest ally, but he's an ally. He's somebody that she could work with. And she's, again, going to lose an ally under a different ally's HOH. Um, and she's not going to be able to, uh, to stop Kiefer from doing this. Uh, but they don't push back too much, her and Tara. They're still trying to maintain their spot in the middle, and they do not want to be caught. Uh, so they take more of a hands-off approach here, uh, and, and they let Kyle and Roe sort of do most of the pushing. Kyle and Roe are pleading for Tina and Tara to pitch for Victoria or for Austin and Brayden to go up, uh, and they placate Kyle and Roe, but they don't actually fall into that trap. Uh, again, the hands-off approach here is very good, for their position because if they push too hard in any particular direction it puts them firmly on a side and that means that they can be targeted uh successfully by an alliance if they uh if they land themselves on a side here um so uh Kiefer is going to put up Kyle and Roe uh you know un unfortunately for Tara uh Roe is going to win the veto and Austin goes up as the replacement now, uh, Kiefer is going to work for the Sunsetters here, and this is terrible for Terra. Uh, she, uh, he flips Victoria against the oddballs, tells Terra and Tina that Vic is with them and could be a fourth, 
And they're down for that. They feel like Kiefer is working for them. He flipped Victoria, and now Victoria is basically a pre-90s member. But in reality, he's pushing Vic toward the Sunsetters, and she has pledged her loyalty to Ty and Jed. Tara and Tina do not know that, and so they feel like Victoria is now on their side, and that their middle alliance is growing, and they've lost Kyle, but that's fine because they've got their middle alliance, they've got the, odd, the rest of the oddballs, uh, there's still an army to go after, Ty and Jed, and they'll be okay. Um, so, uh, with Austin on the block, Tara decides, you know what? Things could be even better. I want to keep Kyle. Uh, and so, uh, she may tries to make a move to flip the vote and save Kyle. Uh, she likes him more than Austin. She thinks he's more willing and more capable of making that move against Ty and Jed. So, she, she pushes for this. Again, this is Tara, um, seeing an opportunity and kind of playing in a different game than everyone else. This time she has a little more power. This time she's in a, a, a better position to actually make something happen. Maybe she can find some success. She pitches it to Beth, and Beth is on board. Beth pitches it to the guys, and the guys are on board. And all of a sudden, she might have just flipped this vote. She might have just saved Kyle. Again, the problem is her ally, Kiefer, who shuts it down. He says, absolutely not. Kyle needs to go. Uh, she does not give up, though. She tries pitching it to Kiefer herself, and he says no. Uh, and she gets very frustrated with Kiefer. Uh, she says that, uh, he is not listening to her. He says, how dare you even pitch this to me? This is like if you had, uh, Jed or Ty on the block, and I said, uh, no, we should keep Jed or Ty, uh, on your HOH. Um, and he gets very frustrated with her, and they actually get into it a little bit. Again, Tara has a temper. Um, so she moves on to Ty, uh, and she pitches this hard to Ty, who was on board with this plan. He, was, he had always wanted Austin gone. Uh, she tries to pitch it to Ty, but she pitches it so hard um, that uh, he gets sketched out by how hard she's pitching it. And he's like, wait a minute, why are you working so hard to get rid of Austin and keep Kyle? Is Kyle coming for me? Are you keeping Kyle in order to come for me? Is that what's happening here? Is that, is that why you're pitching so hard? Uh, and so he says, you know what? We can't keep Kyle. Uh, Kyle actually makes a great pitch the, the following day, but Ty's biggest argument against keeping Kyle after they consider it yet again is Tara wants Kyle too bad. There's something going, there's something wrong here. And uh, Tara actually proves to be counterproductive to a potential Kyle flip, and the flip dies. Uh, so this is again, it, this is this is so Terra that she tries, but she can't succeed. And sometimes it's actually counterproductive. Sometimes it actually goes in the reverse direction of where she wants to go. Um, so before he leaves, Kyle does let Tina and Terra know that they can trust Austin and Brayden. Now, he, he does this because Kiefer has been getting in Tina and Tara's ear. Kiefer, the grim Kiefer, uh, he, is, uh, he is, you know, for better or worse, our strategic force in this season. Um, and he was all over Ty's game recap. He'll be all over this one as well. Again, Kiefer is the one this week that targets Kyle against Tara's will, still is able to maintain his alliance with them, um, and, while taking out one of their closest allies. Uh, that's how you do it, Victoria. Um, he's also going to flip Victoria and convince Tina and Tara that Victoria is with them, convince Ty and Jed that Victoria is with them. Victoria really was with Ty and Jed, uh, but uh, he, he convinces both of his alliances that he's flipped Victoria for them. Um, and then he's also going to get into Tina and Tara's ear, telling them that they can't trust Austin and Brayden, trying to separate them from their other allies uh, at this point in time, it's Kiefer doing a lot of work, a lot of it to help the Sunsetters, um, but, uh, but also to pretend, potentially help him. Uh, again, it, you know, if, if we do talk about Kiefer, um, I think that uh, all of this strategic maneuvering um, is, is not always benefiting him the most. Um, so uh, that's, that's the thing about that, but uh, that's, that's for Kiefer's, Kiefer's game recap. Um, so he's trying to convince Tina and Tara that Austin and Brayden are coming for them and they can't trust them. 
but this fails. Um, it, it gets in their head. It succeeds at first because they trust Kiefer. But, uh, but Kyle uh, and Ro end up talking to Tina and Tara and they say, look, you can trust them. I'm telling you, Austin and Braden are not coming for you. They are still with the oddballs. They are still with you. You can trust them. Uh, it's not true that they're coming for you. And uh, Tara and Tina agree. They can trust Austin and Braden. The oddballs are not dead. Kiefer was wrong. Maybe he was mistaken. Maybe he was lied to. Because uh, he wouldn't lie to us, right? Um, so we should still work with Austin and Braden once Kyle leaves. And Kyle does leave 7-1 to one, uh, as we head into week five um week five. Oh wow uh another week that should have been a great week here for tara um she very nearly wins this hoh she comes down it comes down to a tiebreaker and she loses the tiebreaker to victoria it's the invisible hoh now if tara had won this invisible hoh it's an entirely different game entirely different game Ty is probably gone um because Ro wins this veto, Ty is definitely gone, uh, or at least close to it, right? Um, and Victoria has a huge, or sorry, uh, Tara has a huge move on her resume. Um, and uh, like again, the, the entire landscape of this game completely changes based on that tiebreaker. Uh, and um, unfortunately for Tara, she loses that tiebreaker. V uh, Victoria wins the invisible HOH. And uh as the invisible hoh uh victoria is an ally again victoria should should be an ally of tina and tara um it should be doing good work for them she should be targeting jed and ty now unfortunately for tara Kiefer has has gotten in 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 victoria's ear and uh and helped move her toward jed and ty away from Tina, Tara, and the Oddballs. So, uh, she decides to target Austin and Brayden. This is going to frustrate Tara. Um, she came so close to winning this HOH. She has another ally in power, and she is again going to lose an ally. She can't win in this game. She is safe. Her allies keep winning HOH. But every single time it happens, she ends up losing one of her own people. Vict Victoria has an HOH. She's an oddball. She targets Toya, one of her few allies on the other side. Kiefer wins HOH. He's a pre-90s member. He targets Kyle, one of her allies on the oddball side. Victoria wins the next HOH. She's supposed to be an oddball. She's also supposed to be an honorary pre-90s member. And she ends up targeting an oddball, one of her allies. Uh, she cannot win. There are a few people in this game that are being protected by the people that she is trying to work with, and she is starting to lose it. She, her irritability, her frustration, her temper is at an all-time peak here. Uh, she's becoming frustrated that everybody always says her name. Her name is the easy name to say. As a pawn, as a target, nobody ever says Tina's name. Why is that? Why does nobody ever say Tina's name? Everybody always says my name and not Tina's name. Um, it's at this point that Ty is just fully fed up with Tara in the game. The way that she speaks to and about him, he says he is not a sensitive person, but it is too much. Uh, Tara at this point has um, committed some microaggressions against Ty uh, and Jed. Um, talking about how much money they make, uh, accusing uh, Ty of, of like uh, saying that like, oh, Ty, I thought you stole my uh, cigarettes or whatever it was. I don't remember. Um, and uh, and various other things that, that were documented at the time. Um, it was making Ty feel very uncomfortable. And at this point in the game, he was like, you know what? Screw it. Ro has been really nice to me. Ro has been hanging out with me. Maybe I don't want to target Ro. Maybe I need to target Tara first because I just need to get her out of here. Um, and uh, her social capital in the game is at an all-time low at this point. She cannot control her temper. She cannot control her irritability. And um, it's, uh, it, it, is, it is costing her big here. Um, now, fortunately for her, Ro is going to screw up uh his positioning and he's gonna try and con he's gonna try and turn beth against the guys which forces them to set their sights back onto Ro before tara 
and that is going to give her a little bit of a reprieve. Um, now, Tina's going to figure out during the week that Victoria must be the invisible HOH, and she shares that theory with Tara. Tara agrees with her, and they both agree that Victoria, unfortunately, cannot be trusted. Uh, if she's targeting Austin, then she must be playing this game for the guys, and that is not good for them, so they cannot trust Victoria. Um, Ro is going to end up winning the veto and does not use it, uh, despite promising that he would. Um, so uh, that leaves Austin and Brayden on the block, and Tara is back in a position where she feels like they're voting Austin out, but if they're voting Austin out, then I want Austin to stay. And Tara again tries to flip the vote in order to get rid of Brayden this time. Uh, so they can keep Austin as a bigger target, and Austin is going to go after Jed and Ty. She does not trust Brayden to go after Jed and Ty. So she gets Ro on board, um, and they warn Ro that Vic can't be trusted, but he pitches to Vic anyway, and she refuses. because She's the invisible HOH. Uh, they also try to work on Kiefer, but he also seems reluctant. Kiefer ends up telling Tina that he wants Austin gone. He'll take out Brayden next week, and then he wants Ro out, uh, or at least uh, in some combination of, of that order, right? Uh, and he wants to go to the final seven with the uh, with the trio, uh, Jed, Ty, and Beth, uh, and Victoria, and the pre-90s. That's his ideal final seven. Uh, Tina's going to bring that information back to Tara and says, Tara, Kiefer can't be trusted either. Um, unfortunately, he's got his own agenda, and he is not working in our best interests. He wants Austin gone. He wants Braden gone. He wants Roe gone. He wants all of our allies gone. Uh, this this sucks. What are we going to do? Um, and the answer is nothing. They can't do anything because they don't have any agency in the game. Um, or at least they don't have much agency in the game. They are going to make some moves next week. Uh, so um, Victoria is going to tell Tara that, um, hey, 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 Tara. Beth doesn't think you deserve to be here. She wants to put you on the block, um, which is true. Tara, Beth said those things. Um, but Victoria is obviously trying to get Tara to go after Beth uh, because Vic thinks she's subtle. Uh, so Tara and Tina, of course, see right through this and they realize, OK, so Vic wants to get Beth out so that she can be closer to the guys. We see what she's doing. Great. Um, Austin is going to be evicted unanimously because Tara cannot get anywhere with these flips, uh, unfortunately for her. And uh, we're going to head into week six. In week six, Beth is going to win the HOH. And coincidentally, uh, she actually, yeah, she does want Tara out. Again, she, I mean, Vic wasn't lying. Um, Beth is targeting Tara. Uh, she does not want Ro out because she wants Ro to go after the guys. And she considered taking Vic out, but she doesn't think it's the time yet. Um, she says, Tara doesn't do anything for my game. Uh, and Tara doesn't deserve to be here. So I want to take Tara out. She decides she's going to put Tina and Tara on the block. Um, however, and I have to give most of the credit here to Tina because this is Tina's idea. Tina came up with the idea to uh, approach uh, Beth and, and Jed and 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 rat out victoria um and and she 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 mapped it out she gave tara the plan she told tara how to do it um but we also have to give tara some credit because she is the one that executed the mo uh, the, pro the, the the most she executed most of this uh tara does most of the talking here um and so uh they rat out vic to jed first and then to beth um and they say that uh hey vic told me last week that uh, you said I don't deserve to be here, and they said that, uh, or she said that uh, you wanted to nominate me this week. So, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on with that, but hopefully it's not true. Um, Beth realizes that Victoria has definitely been trying to get her out because she did say those things, um, and there's no way that Tara could have known unless Vic really did tell her. Um, so... Uh, she decides, you know what? Vic needs to go. Vic is coming for me. I thought maybe it wasn't the time, but it is the time. I want to backdoor Victoria. Uh, so she puts, uh, sorry, I said Tara and Tina uh, before. Tara and Roe were the nominees. Uh, <clears throat> she puts Tara and Roe on the block with the intention of backdooring Victoria. Uh, 
Uh, so the the plan for the Sunsetters, we're talking about Terra, so we don't need to deal with their in, 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 indecisiveness. Uh, but it goes back and forth about a billion times. Um, but it's always between Ro and Vic in the pre veto stage of the week. Uh, Terra, uh, uh, Beth is, is adamant that it's a waste to get out Terra this week now. Um, and Kiefer had helped put in some work for her there as well. Kiefer is the one that, uh, planted the idea that it's a complete waste to use the week on Terra. He wanted, uh, he wanted Ro or Vic to leave. Um, and, and again, I don't really know why he wanted Vic to leave for sure. But, uh, again, it's, it's the way things go. Um, Tina does, uh, does have to, uh, keep Terra calm. Again, a uh, big weakness in Terra's game. It's hard for her to stay calm. Um, Tina has to keep her calm on the block so that she doesn't mess up the plan. Uh, it proves to be difficult, uh, as Terra does get upset that Beth is taking Ro to Wendy's and not her. Um, and, uh, she's gonna be bad-mouthing them, uh, pretty publicly a few times. Um, and, and Kiefer is going to rat her out. And uh, the, the spotlight does come back on her a couple of times, and it is going to backfire uh, once the veto is, is won and used. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's the way things go. With, with Terra, you have to accept these things. Um, so Tina and Terra finally tar start talking about Jed as uh, being the bigger target than Ty at this point in the game. So uh, Jed is now becoming uh, their primary target over Ty. Uh, he's the one holding the triangle together. He's really good at competitions. They think he threw that HOH to Beth. Uh, and of course, he is in this power couple with Beth. Um, so Ro wins the veto. And the Victoria backdoor plan is enacted. Uh, Victoria goes on the block next to Terra. And uh, you'd think this is great for Terra because you'd never put Victoria on the block as a backdoor and then keep her. That would be absurd. Not going to talk about it. Not talking about the Sunsetters. Don't need to talk about it. Don't need to talk about it. Victoria spends the week endlessly campaigning uh, while the triangle endlessly waffles back and forth. Um, Beth... Frustrated with Terra for being so uh, irritable and bad-mouthing her, uh, decides vindictively, I don't want Terra to feel safe. I want her to have to fight for it. So she encourages Victoria to uh, call a house meeting uh, to call Terra out. Um, and, uh, and she does so. Uh, Victoria calls Terra out. She calls out the oddballs in general. She outs the oddballs for not having their back, uh, her back. Uh, Terra pushes back, says, Vic! Hey, you tried to target, you tried to get me to target Beth. Did you not say that Beth said I don't deserve to be here? Did you not say that? And Victoria tries to, tries to evade, tries to evade, tries to evade. Did you not say that Beth told you that I don't deserve to be here? Well, you don't deserve to be here, Tara! Ouch. Um, so it's, it's a house meeting. Uh, Tara is pissed at Beth, uh, for all of the flip-flopping. She was, uh, she was said she's going to leave Beth off the block if she won, but not anymore. Beth is definitely an option for her after all of this, after everything she's putting her through. She's, she cannot believe that, uh, that they put Victoria on the block and now they're like, I don't know, I don't know, Tara, why, why should we keep you? Like, are you kidding me? Uh, she can't believe it. Um, she ends up making a final pitch to the trio, swearing on her kids that she will not come for them, makes an emotional plea that she wants to be there for the anniversary of her brother's death. And this pitch turns out to be quite clutch because they were about to tell Victoria that they were going to keep her. And after this pitch, they said, eh, all right, guess not. Guess we're keeping Tara. That was a good pitch. Uh, and after that final pitch, they do still waffle, but... They're only like half cooked waffles. There's like still some batter in the middle. You know what I mean? Um, so ultimately, Tara manages to survive a spot that she should have survived. And Victoria is evicted unanimously. Um, when Vic talks about her jury rankings, when Vic talks about who she is likely to vote for as a juror, she lists Tara dead last. Tara is the last person that she would vote for in the jury uh, as of the time of her eviction. 
Um, did not talk about anybody redeeming themselves either, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so uh, we head into a double eviction after Victoria is evicted. Kiefer wins the double eviction HOH. Again, hurrah! Pre-90s, I'm in an alliance with Kiefer. I am safe and he'll hopefully do something that will help me. No. Again, an alliance member wins the HOH. And again, she loses an alliance member to an alliance member's HOH. Kiefer nominates Brayden and Roe. Ty wins the veto, does not use it, and Roe is evicted unanimously. Uh, it's a really rough outcome for Tara. Time is really running out to take a shot at this point. Uh, and Roe's, uh, when Roe talks to me and talks about his jury uh, prospects uh, as a voter, uh, he also lists Tara dead last. Also does not talk about people redeeming themselves, but also this is pretty early in the process. Uh, so right now, Tara is down two votes uh, to, uh, to, to anybody that she sits next to in the final two, um, according to these ratings, again, at that time. Um, we head into week seven, and uh, Tara, again, just loses it. She, 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 she's so done with this game. She keeps losing allies to other allies HOHs, and in this next HOH competition, the only person she should have left is Brayden, and Brayden targets her in the HOH competition. She's done with this game. She calls them all cowards, and you can understand why, right? Every single week, time after time, her allies have been winning, and they haven't been targeting the enemies. They've been targeting her allies. And now, in this HOH competition, it's, 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 it's really getting down to it. Two jury members have already gone into the jury, and this, this, this enemy, this triangle, this trio is still in the game, and, uh, and she still has allies. She still has Tina. She still has uh, Brayden. She still has Kiefer, theoretically, and they're all still working. What are they going to do? Apparently, Brayden is now working with them. She's like, what is happening? I can't do anything in this game. You're all cowards. You're just letting these people win this game. What's wrong with you? Uh, and she loses the HOH competition to Jed. She gets into a fight with Kiefer. After the HOH competition, um, she goes straight to Ty, straight to Jed, and she says, yeah, you know what? I lied to you last week. I swore on my kids that I wasn't going to come for you. But I was going to come for you. If I won this HOH, it would have been you and your buddy on the block. Guess what? That's the way it is. I don't care anymore. Evict me. I'm done with this game. She's resigned to her fate. And ironically, this is the most social capital she's ever going to have in the game. Her not trying to play the game ends up working better than her actually trying to play the game uh, because she's not good at playing the game. But when she's just being full on herself, uh, it actually works a little bit better here. And we'll talk about why. Um, so uh, Tara is going to be the target once she admits that she was going to target them. Uh, and, uh, Brayden, uh, is, is going to, uh, help her case a bit here. Uh, he's not going to be leaving the trio alone all week long. And, uh, and, and they're becoming increasingly frustrated with him. So Tara eventually cools down and goes to Beth and makes a pitch. She says, look, yeah, I'm going after Ty and Jed. It's the way things are. I know I can't win this game. I've been completely ineffective the entire game. Nothing I've done has worked. I haven't won any competitions. I don't have any allies that, that work for me. Uh, I've got nothing. I know I'm not going to win. My closest ally is Tina, and, and nobody even says her name. It's always my name. I know Tina's not taking me. Tina's not taking anyone to the end. Uh, she's being taken. So what am I going to do here, Beth? What am I going to do? I've got nothing. I need somebody to take me to the end. I just want 20K. Just get me to second place. I'm here for the money. I'll take second. I, you, you, it, it'll be easy to beat me. I'll take second place. I'll get that 20K and I'll be happy. All right. 
And I know, I know you need me in this game. You need me to, you need me to go gun for the guys. Brayden's not gonna do that. Brayden, Brayden loves Ty. He's not gonna go after the guys. You saw what he did in the HOH competition. Keep me in this game. Bring me to the final two. Get me that 20k. I'll help you take out the guys. Um, and Beth is like, Oh my sweet merciful God. Yeah, I like that actually. I'm down. Did Terra just. Did Terra just make an ally? Did Terra just convince somebody to do something? Um, this is the week. This is the week here. The Terra's game starts actually working. Um, and uh, she manages to convince Beth uh, to, uh, to want to keep her in the game. Uh, so it works. Beth pitches to the guys. Uh, hey, let's backdoor Brayden. And the guys uh, agree. Um, we want to we wanna backdoor Brayden. Uh, and at this point in the game, Beth has now changed her mind. She has always wanted Tara gone. She's wanted to bring Tina to the end. She decides, you know what? I want to bring Tara to the end, and I want to get rid of Tina. So, on top of all of that, Tara wins the veto. It's her first competition win, and... All of a sudden, things are looking up for Tara. She's won a competition. She just convinced Beth to backdoor Brayden. If Brayden goes home this week, she keeps Tina. She keeps Kiefer. She's won a competition now. All right. Things are looking okay here. She's got Beth kind of on her side. Like, that's a decent position for her. Unfortunately, she's working with people in this game. That, uh, they like to change their minds. And so, after she wins the veto, Jed decides, yeah, we could do Brayden, but we could also do Kiefer. Why don't we just go one bigger? We could do Kiefer. Oh, we could, God, and we. Oh, oh, we could. So they decide they're going to put up Kiefer. And Tara is like, are you kidding me? Now, she's going to lose Kiefer or she's going to lose Tina because Kiefer and Tina are on the block and all of a sudden, uh, all of that work that she did is for nothing because she's again going to be losing an ally. Um, and uh, it's, not, it's, it's not great. It's not great for Tara. Um, Ty wants Tara gone after uh, they take out Kiefer. He is done with the floaters and he wants them gone from the game. Uh, Tara spends the week uh, talking out her issues with Jed. Again, uh, Tara with nothing to lose actually is able to make some progress socially because uh, she's just being real. And, 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 it's, and it feels weird to say that, but because um, people say they're being real when what they mean is they're being mean. Um, but Tara is in the, I don't give a... That's the button I was looking for. Uh, uh, she's in the, she, I don't care mode and, uh, and, and that sort of just genuine raw, even though it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's a little bit, uh, rough around the edges. Um, it, it, it manages to connect with people. Beth felt like she was telling the truth. Jed felt like she was telling the truth. And, uh, and she, she has some good conversations with Jed. She tells him also that she doesn't mind second place and he appreciates those conversations. Um, she also tells Brayden that, uh, hey, we still need to work together to take a shot at the guys um, now that she knows that Brayden's going to stay in the game. And uh, he's like, oh, she's not targeting me? Huh? Uh, Kiefer pitches to the trio that uh, he should stay. In this pitch, he promises that he will put Tara up because she is their primary target at this time. Uh, and he lets Tara know he'll need to follow through on that promise. And she's like, are you kidding me? I did all this work only for them to put Kiefer on the block. And now my ally Kiefer, he's the one that's going to stay and he's going to target me. What just happened? I'm losing Tina. I'm losing Kiefer. Brayden is obsessed with Ty. I'm alone in this game all of a sudden. What just happened? It pisses her off. And she gets into a fight with Kiefer. 
Tina helps resolve their differences, tells them they need to work together, uh, but it's a rocky place here. Uh, Tina is then evicted three to one, obviously against Tara's will. Um, and when Tina talks to me, lists she lists her jury preferences as Kiefer number one, Tara number two, Ty number three, and Brayden number four. So for the first time, she is listed ahead of some people in these jury rankings. She is still down uh, three votes to Kiefer, but she is now only down two to one against Ty and Brayden. Um, so we move into week eight, where Tara wins her second consecutive competition, and she has the HOH. All of a sudden, with two competitions under her belt, she's become a contender. She has followed the classic story arc of completely ineffectual person in the uh, first two thirds of the game. Um, not, not able to win anything, not able to make any influence on the game, just barely surviving because nobody thinks she's wor worth being targeted and then wins a couple of end game competitions and all of a sudden becomes a late game underdog contender. Um, it's a great position to be in from the audience perspective because the audience loves these characters. Uh, and it is also a great place to be from a jury perspective. The jury also tends to love these characters, uh, despite how unlikable they may have been uh, prior. Everyone loves an underdog and Tara has all of a sudden become one. Um, so her target is Jed. She plans on uh, putting Ty on the block next to Jed as a pawn because she believes that she has made this connection with Beth, that Beth is on her side and that she can work with Beth moving forward. She doesn't think that Beth would use the veto on Jed because she actually wants Jed out. Beth, however, comes up with a completely nonsensical and unnecessary plan to try and trick Tara into not being able to evict any of the trio, even though she kind of wanted Tara to evict one of the trio. Uh, she wants to convince Tara to put up Brayden and Kiefer so that uh, that she can backdoor Jed. Um, and then uh, in reality, they would end up voting Brayden out or maybe just backdooring Jed anyway. Um, Kiefer rats this plan out to Tara and is able to recite some of the things that Beth has stupidly told him about the things that she has told Tara, uh, which confirms to Tara that Beth has been telling Kiefer with the things that she has been telling Tara. And uh, this upsets Tara. She is not happy. Uh, she cannot believe that Beth has been playing her. And she decides that she cannot, uh, in fact, um, put, uh, put Ty on the block. She's going to have to put Beth on the block because Beth will use the veto on Jed. Uh, Why don't you go on the block, Beth? She will. Um, so, uh, Kiefer, uh, having uh, sunk Beth's game at this point, uh, is going to land... Beth on the block. Uh, when Tara tells Beth she is going up, Beth is pissed. She says, how dare you? I threw that veto competition to you. Uh, and uh, Tara receives a promise from Ty that he will not use the veto if he wins it. So Beth and Jed go on the block. Jed ends up winning the veto. Now, Tara is resigned to sending Beth out of the game at this point uh, with Ty as the pawn until Kiefer proposes an idea. He says, let's convince Jed to use the veto on Beth instead of himself. Tara says, that's dumb. It's not going to work. To be fair, so did I. Uh, she tells Jed, uh, but she's willing to give it, a give it a shot. She tells Jed she does not want Beth to go. And if he's willing to uh, show an act of good faith uh, and take Beth off the block instead of himself, then she'll put Brayden up and they'll send Brayden home. Uh, Jed considers the idea while Beth, Ty, and Kiefer pump him up about it. And ultimately, he decides, all right. Let's do it. Uh, he tells Tara that he wants to do it. Uh, and Tara plans on putting Ty on the block because she doesn't want to risk being played by the trio and having them change their minds or end up evicting Brayden on what might be her only HOH. Uh, however, at the last minute, she decides she can't go through with it because it will uh, upset Jed all week long. And she tells Brayden that he will need to go up instead, but he doesn't need to do it if he doesn't feel comfortable. But he does feel comfortable. And so... Uh, that's going to be the plan. Kiefer tries to talk her out of it, but she follows through anyway and puts Brayden on the block when Jed uses the veto on Beth. Now, I've talked extensively about why I think this was a really bad move. Um, 
it's for multiple reasons. One is that it was completely unnecessary. It was a completely unnecessary risk. She basically took a slam dunk situation, uh, a 100% guaranteed she gets out Jed or Ty, but probably Jed situation, and she gets a ton of credit for it, and there are no downsides, um, and, uh, and, and, it, and it works out, and it's great. Uh, she took that situation, and she turned it into a situation where there is immense downside. If they flipped, if they were tricking her, and they take out Brayden, then she looks like an idiot, and she can never win this game. If they, even just if they change their minds, which they often do in this game, and she knows that better than anyone, and Brayden leaves, then she again looks like an idiot, and uh, probably can't win this game, and is in a terrible, terrible position. There's zero reason to take this risk in the first place. Uh, on top of that, um, she gets less credit for this move, having put Brayden on the block. Uh, it's not her move when she puts up Brayden. It's her move if she back if she goes against the 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 deal immediately and puts up uh, Ty because ha, I just got you. You're now going home, and she has the jury management to manage that. Um, she gets all the credit for it, and it's great. Um, but instead of doing that, she puts up Brayden and tells everyone, hey, this is Kiefer's plan. I'm just following along Kiefer's plan. Uh, and, um, and so she gets less credit for it, in, in my opinion, especially the way that she, um, she, she, she talks about it. Uh, and the only reason, the only reason you would ever, ever put Brayden on the block instead of Ty is to try to win a little bit of goodwill from Ty. Ty, the guy who is betraying his best friend all game this week. You think that goodwill matters to Ty? Of course not. Ty is going to be evicting her that very night that Jed is evicted. He doesn't care about goodwill. There's no reason to give him any goodwill here. Uh, this is a terrible, terrible move. Uh, and it it worked out. So people will not talk about it in the future. But it is a terrible move. Um, so... Uh, she puts up Brayden and, uh, she spends the rest of the week, uh, giving hints to Jed that he will be leaving. Um, but he doesn't fully believe them because Ty and Kiefer are still lying to him. Uh, Kiefer convinces Ty to target Tara before Beth because they see Beth as less threatening than Tara now that Tara has taken out Jed. Um, and this is where Ty targeting Tara in that fake double eviction is going to come into play. Uh, and Tara tells Jed before he leaves that, hey... You have nothing to be embarrassed about. Uh, you have a wonderful heart, and people will see that. Uh, now, contrast this with my game recap of Ty and how he handled this eviction, and you may start to see why Tara has a chance at winning a jury vote against Ty. Um, so, Jed is evicted unanimously. He talks to me, and his jury list is key for number one. Ty and Tara tied for number two, and Brayden last. So Tara now is down four votes against Kiefer. Uh, she is tied with Brayden, two verse two, uh, two v two, um, two to two, uh, and uh, she is um, you know two to one against Ty uh, because this is a tied vote. Um, but if we take into account Beth's list a little bit later, we can say that Tara likely goes above Ty and is probably two to two with both Ty and Brayden. Um, so uh, again, that is according to these lists at these times. Um, so we head into the fake double eviction. Uh, Ty wins the HOH, puts up Tara and Beth. Brayden wins the veto, does not use it. Tara realizes that once again, after her HOH, she has been screwed. Uh, none of the people that she was working with all week last week are actually working with her. Nobody likes her, and she's about to be voted out. And they do vote her out. Uh, she gets evicted in the fake double eviction. She meets up with Jed in the HOH room and tells him, Hey, it was not my plan. It was Kiefer's plan. It was Ty's thing. It was Kiefer's thing. I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't like this from her because I think that she needs this credit. Um, she ends up beating Jed and returning to the game, and that is definitely great for her game. If anything, being evicted was better for her jury odds than not being evicted just because it allowed her to doubly take out Jed and get a little bit of that credit back. Um, so uh, we'll see. 
but uh, you know, it kind of worked out. We head into week nine, and Brayden wins the HOH. He nominates Tara and Beth again. This time, they want Beth out. Tara is feeling defeated after realizing that nobody cares about her and just kind of lies low and lets Beth blow herself up, which Beth does. Uh, Brayden wins the veto and doesn't use it, and uh, Tara at this point holds no loyalty to anyone, but can't really do anything about it. Beth tells Tara that she'll need to take out Brayden or Kiefer next week and that she can't go to the end with Kiefer because Kiefer will win the game. She helps Tara study uh, and uh, tells, uh, you know, is essentially trying to help uh, Tara in any way that she can because, hey, Tara's the only one not screwing her over this week. Uh, Tara tells Beth she should be proud of how she played and is so grateful for all of the information and help that Beth has given her. Um, Beth is evicted unanimously. And uh, when Beth talks to me, her list is Kiefer number one, Tara number two, Brayden number three, Tyne number four. And just like that, she is down five votes to Kiefer, but up three to two against both Ty and Brayden in these rankings. Not bad. We head into week 10. HOH competition, Ty is going to win. Uh, Ty is, uh, he's not sure who he wants evicted, either Kiefer or Tara. Um, I don't know who he wanted evicted. He nominates Kiefer and Tara. Uh, we get to the veto competition and Tara wins it. Now, based on what we saw, it seemed as though Tara was leaning toward Kiefer being evicted. She was upset that, uh, Beth had told her that Tina was a sunsetter and she did not know that and Kiefer did not tell her that. She's also concerned because Beth told her that Kiefer wants a guy to win and that Kiefer can beat them all in the final two. Uh, Kiefer has also, Kiefer has told her that Ty plans on taking him to the final two if he gets there uh, in the final three. And she's also worried about Brayden taking Ty. Uh, so she's a little bit back and forth here. Um, it's a, a, li a, little, a little bit back and forth. Um, so she talks to, to Kiefer. Kiefer makes a terrible pitch for himself. Um, and the feed's cut. It definitely seemed like she was planning on cutting Kiefer. Something would have needed to change, in my opinion, for her to have changed her mind, and that is definitely possible. She may have done that. Now, in my opinion, uh, I think she is yet again making the wrong choice for herself if she does evict Kiefer, which may sound a little strange given the fact that, as I've said, she's up three to two against both Brayden and Ty uh, and down five votes to Kiefer in it when it comes to a jury vote. However, with Kiefer having not won any competition since the double eviction when Roe was evicted all the way back then, uh, and Brayden having just won three competitions in, the, in a row, Ty having won two competitions in the last couple of weeks, um, Ty and Brayden are bigger competition threats in this final HOH, especially if there's any physical component. Uh, in addition to that, Ty and Brayden are definitely taking each other at this time. Uh, and that means that Tara will need to win that final three HOH no matter what against two better competitors. So I talked about this on the final update, but uh, it, it really, really is, 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 is sold here. Um, yes, if Tara evicts Kiefer, she gets a little bit extra credit, right? Uh, she's the one that evicted Kiefer. Maybe that means she has a better chance of winning against um, Ty or Brayden, whatever it is there. Um, but she would need to win that final HOH in order to do it. Um, because against Ty and Brayden, Ty and Brayden take each other. So, okay, let's say Ty wins the HOH and takes Tara after she cuts Brayden. Now, Ty is the one that evicted Kiefer in the final three. That doesn't seem great, right? That seems like, oh, you just let Ty evict Kiefer instead of yourself. Now Ty is going to beat you in a jury vote, potentially. But you have to look at it this way. If Kiefer is still there, uh, he's taking Tara, potentially. If Brayden is there and Ty wins the HOH, then he's taking Brayden. Instead of a potential of a second place potential win, she's out in third place. So Ty winning the HOH is either she's out of the game with Brayden there, or she's less likely to beat Ty with Kiefer there. That's an easy choice, right? Um, Switching, interchanging uh, Brayden and Kiefer. If Kiefer is there, uh, he either takes Ty and she's out in third, or he takes her and she loses anyway. If, if Kiefer wins that final three HOH, she loses no matter what. 
Um, but Kiefer's the least likely person to win that final three HOH. Uh, if Braden wins that final three HOH, she also loses no matter what, because Braden always takes Ty. And Ta and Braden is more likely to win that final three HOH. So again, inter interchangeably, if Braden and Kiefer both Make her lose if they win that final three HOH, no matter what. Pick the person who's the bigger threat. That's Brayden. Take him out. Uh, if she wins the final three HOH and Kiefer is still there, she still gets to evict Kiefer and take Ty and probably win the game. If she wins the final three HOH and Brayden and Ty are there, she now has to evict either Ty or Brayden. She likely still has a good chance of winning the game, but she still has to win that final three HOH against better competitors. So at pretty much every angle, Evicting Brayden is the right call here, but she seemed like she was inclined to evict Kiefer. Um, and for potentially personal reasons, uh, or at least partially personal reasons. So that's where we stand. That's where we stand here with Tara heading into the final three as the feeds cut, and we are going to have to wait and see what she did. So let's talk about it. Let's summarize Tara's game here. Uh, Tara, Tara came into the game immune for two weeks, just like Ty. Um, but unlike Ty, was very slow to make connections, and it really cost her a chance at being in any of the early initial alliances. Um, she bonds with Tina and Toya, but that's pretty much it. People don't like her, they make fun of her behind her back, which only makes her more grumpy and irritable, which makes people like her even less. Uh, she's a common target and pawn option for Team Defender, uh, but luckily for her, when Austin wins the second week HOH, she is safe again and doesn't have to deal with being used as a pawn or even early target. Uh, through her connection to Tina and Toya, she is included in on flip conversations between Josh and Roe, but because she's expendable, Jed and, try, Jed and Ty try to pin the flip on her. Luckily, uh, they were a big old mess and uh, they get caught doing it. Because of the Sunsetter's mistakes, an opportunity presents itself, and she is finally included in, a, in an alliance that may have some sticking power in week three, the Oddballs. Uh, unfortunately, she does not have the sway to prevent Victoria from targeting Toya, which limits her options in the game as Toya is one of the few people she could naturally bond with in the house. Uh, she does, though, manage to pick up Kiefer as an ally through her, his connection to Tina. Um... Again, though, her ally Kiefer wins HOH in the following week, and she is unable to sway him uh, to do the things that go in her favor. Her ally again makes a move that is against her interests when he targets Kyle, and she can't do anything about it. She tries to flip the vote against Austin, but has zero uh, social capital to make it happen, and it actually hurts Kyle's chances uh, more than it helps him. Um, and it also harms her own standing in the game by trying. Uh, for a third time in a row... An ally wins HOH when Vic wins in the Invisible HOH week, uh, but Vic again takes out one of her allies in Austin when she uses that power. Tara is becoming increasingly exasperated at her ineffectiveness in the game. Nobody trusts her, nobody likes her, nobody respects her, and she's annoying people so much that they want to target her even if they feel they shouldn't bother because she's not worth it. Uh, Beth then wins the next HOH, and Tara finally touches the block. She is initially Beth's target, but with some planning from Tina and some good work on her own part, uh, she manages to flip Beth against Victoria, and it ends up going back and forth many, many times, but she does manage to squeeze out of this week alive. Only to have her ally Kiefer win another HOH and again take out one of her other allies. At this point, she's becoming increasingly frustrated, uh, and when she's ganged up on in the following HOH competition, she loses her cool, calling everyone cowards, getting into a fight with Kiefer, and telling the winner of the HOH, Jed, that of course she would have targeted him if she had won the HOH. She's done, and she has nothing left to lose. This version of Terra turns out to be the best version of Terra, as she manages to flip Beth to her side, and just as it initially, uh, just as it finally seems like things are about to go right for her for once, um... The trio changes their minds and puts Kiefer on the block instead of Brayden, ultimately costing her her closest ally, Tina. She rebounds, though, winning the, her, her very first HOH competition. With two competitions in a row under her belt, she readies up for the biggest shots of the game, nominating Jed and Beth. When Jed wins the veto, she helps enact uh, Kiefer's plan to get Jed to use the veto on Beth, but stumbles and puts Brayden up on the block instead of Ty, failing to, uh, to, to be able to claim complete 
credit for the move. It immediately backfires, of course, as the three guys that she worked with to take out Jed immediately turn around and evict her in the fake double eviction. Luckily for her, it was a fake double eviction. And when uh, talking to Jed, she gives credit to Kiefer for taking him out. But she does manage to beat Jed, to come back into the game, and uh, manages to squeak by another round as Be Beth self-destructs, bringing her to the final four, where she pulls out another clutch veto win and finds herself in a position to choose between Kiefer and Brayden uh, for who to bring her, bring with her to the final three. Uh, she seems to want Kiefer out, but she could theoretically go either way. And uh, I do believe that evicting Brayden is the move here. But we'll see where that goes. Uh, so, Tara as a player. Um, a common criticism that Tara receives is that she didn't start playing the game until day 43. Uh, but that's actually an, a, a very unfair criticism. Um... That's just the day she won her first competition. Two-thirds of the way into the game, that's, that's when she won her first veto competition. Uh, Tara has very much been playing the game hard from the start. Uh, there's a reason why I and, I... and I talked about this all the way back in the early days of the season. Um, the problem is that nothing she did in the game actually worked until she had some power to back it up. It's a little bit like, uh, you know, when a tree falls in a forest with nobody to hear it. Uh, did it really make a sound like that was Tara's game, except everybody heard it all the time, constantly, uh, and uh, they just had to tune her out. Um, it, it, they just kind of like, they're like, oh, look, look at Tara running around playing the game. We're just going to ignore her. Um, now, her strategic instincts were not terrible, um, especially in comparison to her competition. Uh, when, when you compare her to the other players in the house, only Kiefer has her beat in terms of influ uh, in terms of strategic, uh, instincts. Um, may maybe, maybe Tina as well. Uh, but, uh, she's never able to execute those, uh, those instincts. And when she does finally get power, uh, when she finally does have the ability to make decisions, she tends to make the wrong ones. Um, she puts up Brayden on the block. She potentially evicts Kiefer here at the final four. Uh, and, you know, I don't want to praise her instincts when she got the few choices she actually had to make wrong. Um, it's just, again, in a season where everybody had terrible instincts, you know, she clears that bar. Uh, now, if Tara wins the game, in my opinion, it's because she performs well under pressure uh, when it comes to competitions. Mm, socially, yeah. Uh, but she's a clutch player. She's always been able to just barely squeeze out a victory for herself when she needs it, both socially and competitively in that regard. Uh, additionally, um, in comparison to Ty and even Brayden, her jury management has been much, much better than ties and a decent amount better than Braden's. Um, Braden did not really form great relationships with a lot of the members of the jury. Uh, just kind of like um, sort of tertiary relationships, sort of like uh, he's nice to them and he said he agrees with them when, he, when they talk. Uh, Tara actually spoke to people as they left and, and complimented them and told them that they're, that they're great. Um, and tried to, to have some sort of like lasting impact as they left um, that was positive. Uh, so those things definitely were in her favor. If Tara loses the game, uh, it will be because of her lack of, of agency and, and her survival focus game. Um, she'll either be cut in the final three because she could not set herself up any better. Her strategic instincts were not good enough to potentially evict Brayden over Kiefer and then gets cut by Brayden uh, or, or Ty in the final three, or uh, because uh, she, uh, she will lose the, the jury vote uh, because of her lack of social connections. Her jury management was not enough to overcome the fact that she just never fit in and never could make those social connections, uh, and uh, the lack of respect that she was able to garner over the course of the game uh, with her gameplay and her social ability. Um, Tara, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing overly special about, about Tara's game. Again, it's, it's one that we've seen a lot. 
Uh, in fact, usually, like, um, you know, usually you would see... Uh, I, I think you could probably compare it a little bit to a, a Nicole's game in Big Brother 21, um, where uh, Nicole is also going to be trying to do some things throughout most of the game, but never really has the social capital to do it, only has a couple of close allies. I think the difference is that Nicole found a bit more success throughout the game in terms of uh, what she was actually doing uh, at least in the early game um but i would say that like post um uh post grateful incident uh undeniable incident for uh, nicole when she started to sort of retreat and didn't have as much influence uh to like the end of the game that was that was pretty much tara's trajectory um uh, she won a couple of these end game competitions had that underdog momentum uh, obviously, I think Nicole was a bit more likable in the in the house and uh, had a better chance to win the jury vote uh, than um, than Tara did. Um, I know a lot of people will try to compare Tara to Paris, but uh, I disagree with that one. Um, I think that Paris's game is often uh, misunderstood in the sense that um, you know a lot of people see the Paris game as didn't really do anything until an end game comp run. Uh, but I think that 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 fails to to note the fact that throughout the season, we were calling Paris one of the pillars of strategy in that season. She was definitely playing hard and definitely had influence over the game in a way that Tara never did. Um, so I would not compare her to Paris in that regard. Uh, also, we are looking at a situation where um, Tara was evicted. Um, now, she did not go to the jury house. She did not even leave the house, um, but she was evicted and that is definitely something to take into consideration a lot of people talk about how she wouldn't have been evicted if it hadn't been for the fake double eviction in the first place so they kind of excuse it uh i do not really subscribe to that in particular just because um it was a regular double eviction um double evictions happen all the time there are usually two double evictions maybe one uh uh triple eviction um and uh, and so the fact that there was only one real double eviction this season was kind of abnormal. In fact, uh, if there hadn't been a second double eviction, that would have been more of a twist than there being a second double eviction. Um, so uh, I, I do disagree that being evicted in a double eviction was an unfair twist in any kind of way. Uh, it's something that she should have been prepared for and was not because uh, she dropped the ball when it came to those relationships. She pissed off Brayden by putting him on the block. She didn't win any credit from Ty by not putting him on the block. And uh, and she didn't have any control or influence over their decisions. Kiefer had that influence, and he accidentally influenced them to take out Tara. Uh, so in many situations, Tara ends up leaving the game there. She has to end up beating Jed in this competition, which, uh, you know, kudos to her for beating competition, of course. But, um, you know, it's pretty luck-based, that one. Um, so, uh, you know, at the end of the day, she does manage to survive, but, um, she would be the first winner of the game to be evicted and still win the game. Uh, you know, the, the, the Big Brother God stepped in and stopped it from happening in season one of Big Brother Canada, but it may happen here in season nine. Um, and, uh, it's definitely going to be a huge part of the, uh, discussion about Tara's win if she does end up winning. Um, is Tara the best player in the world? No. Uh, is she an average player? Maybe. Uh, I, I'd, I'd honestly be a little bit pressed to go that far. Um, she does not have the, the killer instinct quite as much as somebody like Ty. She does not have the social game of Brayden. But what she does have is just uh, the clutch. She's got the clutch. Uh, she's ma she manages to pull out the wins that she needs to when she needs to. And you can call that clutch. You can call that luck. Um, you can also say that uh, in a house of uh, strategic misfires, she misfired the least or close to the least. Um, and that also helped her as well. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, Tara's game is Tara's game. I think that what you shouldn't say is that she didn't play the game. What you can say is that she didn't play it well. Um, so here we are. This is Tara, um, and we'll see what happens here in the final three HOH. If she wins that final three HOH, I do think she has a great chance to win the whole thing. But she'll need to take the right person to the end, and I actually feel like she has a better chance of beating Ty than Brayden, and I feel like she might take Brayden if she already cut Kiefer. 
if she cut Brayden already, then I think she'll take Ty over Kiefer, and I think that she wins for sure. Uh, so I really do feel like cutting Brayden is the move here uh, in, in multiple circumstances. But, um, but here we are. Again, that is Tara's game. Thank you guys so much for joining me here for, uh, for this one. Um, this is weirdly uh, longer than, than Ty's game. Um, and part of that is because uh, Tara was, was, you know, again, was playing pretty hard uh, for a lot of the game um, and, uh, and has some decisions to make here at the end. Um, but, uh, not that much longer. Um, so there's Tara, you know, we'll see, we'll see where this goes. Um, these are definitely interesting to do as we look back and there are just so many mistakes throughout all of these games. Um, I have a feeling that, uh, you know, Kiefer's would be the longest, I think for sure. Kiefer did the most in the game. Brayden's is likely going to be the shortest. Um, I'm still not a hundred percent sure what we'll do here. Um, I think, you know, there's there's reason to believe that she was leaning toward evicting Kiefer. So um, tomorrow I'll do Brayden and then uh, I'll either do Kiefer on Wednesday or Thursday. I might wait for the episode um, and then maybe not do Kiefer on Thursday if it becomes Kiefer. If it's Brayden, then I'll do Kiefer on Thursday for sure. Or maybe I'll just do Kiefer on Wednesday if I've got the time. Um, but uh, but that's what I'm going to do Brayden tomorrow um, and then perhaps Kiefer on Wednesday. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, all right. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, we will be live tonight on Monday night to talk about uh, tonight's episode. Uh, of course, um, tomorrow night uh, we'll do the, uh, the round table and, uh, and we'll have some fun. We'll have some fun as we reach the end of the season for Big Brother Canada 9. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Taryn Armstrong. We have some fun over there. And uh, see you guys next time.